I'm your host, Kristen Cavallari. We're back with Justin Anderson. Ooh, I'm so happy to be here. We're happy you're here. So guys, hey, um, we're gonna catch you up to speed on some stuff and also in honor of Valentine's Day, I'm gonna tell you guys about a Valentine's Day that I had one year that was pretty- <laughs> A little story time. Just a little story that was pretty You love hilarious. Valentine's Day, huh? No, I mean, the last- I'm not a big Valentine's I'm Day. I'm not really either. The last few years I've spent it with my kids. Like I'm taking my kids to dinner. Oh, Lash, with kids actually, is cute. Lasher was really cute because Camden, my oldest, he brought his little girlfriend at the time to dinner and they had their own table. And then Sailor Jackson and I sat at the table next to them. But Cam had like an actual date. Like we went and picked her up. He opened with you up. guys there. Yeah, and like obviously I was there, but they were at their own table. And so Camden- Literally, like, as a kid, I'd be like mortified if my family was like, watching. He'd be like, mom, leave me alone. He's a little Casanova. He really right? is. He brought her flowers. He went to the door, picked her, got her, and opened her car oh door for her. I mean, it was like, it was so cute. But Camden is single this year, so it's just a little heartbreaker. So the four of us are just going to go to dinner. What are you and Scoot going to do? We don't take it that seriously. I mean, we like are so romantic and loving and yeah. always together already. Every day is Valentine's Day. Every day is Valentine's Day. Um, no, we're not like over the top romantic. I just don't like Valentine's Day and Scoot doesn't really either. Mm -hmm. Like I don't like those forced kind of holidays. I agree. You know? like, like you have to be romantic today. It's yeah, like, yeah, no. Up. So we'll do something cute. Well, I fucking hate it because I'm single. <laughs> no, I don't well, care. Well, good girls love it though. Like some girls love Valentine's Day. You know what I used to love was Galentine's Day when you would spend it with your girlfriends. And like I when in my early 20s, like we would go out. Like we would go to the club on Valentine's Day, which was like every other weekend. But it was- Cause you, were lo you like love when you're looking for guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's actually a really good time to go out, obviously, is. is go out on Valentine's Day cause it's like the single All people are out. Yeah. Maybe I should go out. You should. Sorry kids, actually, I can't go to dinner. <laughs> Mama's going out. There's no That's a go. real thing though. Where would we even go in Nashville? Scoot and I are with you. They're about my yeah. day. <laughs> See, here's my problem. By the way, I'm getting a t-shirt made that says he's not my boyfriend because Justin and I were just in Park City and I'm I'm chalking it up to this is why guys don't come up to me because I'm always with Justin. But I really think that there is something to it because we travel all the time together and- We look like a couple. Yeah, we don't like hang all over each other but we're always like deep in a conversation. Yes. We're like really into something. Cause a lot of times if someone's together, well no, I guess, I guess if you look like a couple though, you probably wouldn't be talking to each other. You'd be on your phone the whole time. Sure, <laughs> you <laughs> you most couple we look like the most in love couple. Yeah, it looks like a first date. But then I'll always try to play it up. Like I really try to do like my gay mannerisms. It kills me when there is a cute guy around. Like we had snowboards dropped off and Justin turned on his gayness. Like, like so, so hard. hard. <laughs> yeah, I think he was kind of uncomfortable. He was like, okay, I get it, you're gay. That part kills me. But also you at first glance and even just in conversation don't come off as super gay. You're not like a but lot it comes of out pretty quick. I mean, I you can, can turn it on. Yeah, I can turn it on. <laughs> but, that guy was funny though. Oh, he was funny, and I guess, and he was like, "Oh, I'm done after that." I didn't pick up on anything. No, you guys. At the saying. end, of, it was an appointment where we were trying on our snowboards, like trying on our gear and everything. And at the end, because it like started turning like flirty, like we were all like laughing or whatever. And I was like, and then really letting him know that I was gay. So then I think he caught on. Yeah. And he's all, "Yeah, this is actually my last appointment of the day." Like, I don't. Oh, really? really? Okay. <laughs> he thought we were like, "You want to grab a drink?" Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, that's cool. Um, well, have fun going home. I like, don't pick up on shit like that at all. Okay, but anyway, so yeah, so Justin and I just went snowboarding in Park City. We had so much fun. While we were there, there was a snowstorm happening in Nashville. This is the first time in, you know, since my divorce, I've left my kids with a babysitter. I've had, I have my kids full time right now. I've had them for a while. And before I got them full time, this trip was booked. So we were like, we're going. So while we're in Park City, my babysitter's calling me that there's a leak in my basement and the septic system. So let me back up. When you live in the country, <laughs> everyone is on a septic system out here. It's very glamorous. And this is all very new for me, right? But so my septic system had gotten full, I guess. So now there's a leak. It's not, there's not like shit leaking from my ceiling, but there's water, okay? <laughs> but so that's going on. I'm like, oh my God, this is pure mayhem, but okay. So I come home and none of the toilets on my main floor work my shower doesn't work you can't use the dishwasher you can't use the laundry machine so and it's like everyone is snowed in like you can't leave the house there's no. nowhere to go so i got when we got home it was still snow so you could kind of maneuver around but then it um it melted a little bit and then it got Turned freezing cold ice. so everything was ice so my driveway is like this like it is very steep and it's very long and anytime this happens i literally can't leave my house 
but Jackson had slept at a friend's house, so I did have to leave to go get him. I slid down my driveway. Remember you got stuck on my driveway yeah, one year too? Yeah. I slid down. I was like literally two inches away from hitting a tree. The only good thing about that was the tree would have stopped me from going into a ditch. So now I'm super shaky because that shit scares me really when badly. When that happens, it scares the crap out of you. Because you have no control. Yeah. Well, I've never had that happen before because I'm from California, but like that just happened during this one too for me. I slid into somebody's yeah. yard, like went straight into their yard and you have to just like let go of the steering yeah. wheel and just like go, you can't slam on the brakes because that makes it worse. You have to let off the brakes. Yeah. You actually can kind of steer a little bit, but you have to let off the brake yeah. in ice. It's the We were actually texting, thing. and then we were texting, and then like five minutes later, you're like, I just went into someone's yard. I was yeah, like, Christine's like, like, wait, you're out driving right now? I'm like, yeah, it's fine. Those streets are totally fine. I'm going to my workout, no problem. And literally right after, I just slid right into someone's like, yard. Oh my God, <laughs> stay safe. <laughs> But I'm like a really good driver to know. Because in Park City, we watched that guy drive. Oh my God. He was God. a pro. He was so There was good. like a snowstorm going on in Park City, and this one driver that we had was driving so well. He like, was incredible. He was doing like little taps on his yeah, brakes yeah, and like yeah. turned to the side and he was like telling us how to do it. Yeah. So I was thinking about that when I got home. Look at that. Yeah, I felt like a little proud. Yeah, we almost didn't know if we were, because we stayed at the Montage, which is at the top of Park City. It's really Deer Valley. And we didn't know if we were going to make it home one night because it was such a bad snowstorm, but we had the best drive. So yeah, we each got like a little lesson on driving in ice and snow. By the on. way, that drive was so funny because we were like full on in the craziest <laughs> conversations ever, like an embarrassing conversation, I, to be well, honest. You and Chewie were talking about housewives. We were talking about housewives, but then we were like going into like, Every vert, like, so anyways, all of a sudden we see the driver in front of us, like his shoulders kept He's shaking. So he was hard. laughing so hard. But then it turned out, cause I thought he had no idea of anything, yeah. right? But then all of a sudden he totally knew who you were. He was like a fan. He was, yeah, <laughs> yeah, football came up. I was like, oh I mean, no, he, I was like, what did I say? He heard a lot that night. Though. He heard a lot. So hopefully he doesn't go and tell anyone what we were talking about. <laughs> okay, but anyway, so I still have to go get Jackson, right? Cause he's at a friend's house. So now, okay, I'm a little shaky, but I, keep driving down my driveway and I have a gate and right before my gate it's also steep and that was pure ice and I started slipping so I had to turn my car so that I was sideways because otherwise I would have ran into my gate Whoa. and it, yeah so I was so fucking shaky but I get Jackson okay fine now we're coming up I'm like coming up is easier my car gets stuck so I'm like I'm fucking done I am not leaving until all of this ice is melted which I did not do so okay we were stuck at home for, I think it was four days. Camden had a friend here for like four days. Like no one could leave. Anyways, our first night out of the house, we went to the Preds game. We went to a hockey game. I have season tickets. It's actually through my company, so I don't go to all the games. Most people from my company use them. But it made me think of, <laughs> do you remember the hockey player that DM'd me like two years ago? And- Oh yeah, 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 started I, talking. I absolutely Okay, do. so you guys, here's the deal on the hockey games. I have season tickets two rows behind the visitor's bench. So all of the visiting players, I'm like right there. And my kids are obnoxious and they're always like, hey, hey. So I get a lot of DMs from hockey players after games. Which it's is, so fun how close you are. Cause it's very fun. All we do is talk about uh, which ones are so We're just hot. sitting there like, okay, I'm looking them up. Like, mm -hmm. And hockey players are exceptionally hot. You know what it is? The ass. The ass is the phenomenal. The ass and the thick thighs. Uh, it's also just like that, like super masculine, like toughness. Well, and a lot of hockey happens in the north, and I feel like northern like people, Canada, Canada, Minnesota, like yeah. it's the nicest people. Like they're the yeah. Oh, we should go to Minnesota some more. We should more. go to Minnesota. Really nice guys and there. And Canada. <laughs> oh, I love Canada. I love, I love Canadian Canadia. people in general. They're the nicest, they're the nicest. people. The only thing with hockey is a lot of them are too young for me, but that's neither here nor there. Well, you know what's so funny because we, when we're sitting there, we're talking about like, I think they're our age. I'm older than you, I know. but I think they're our age. And then, so we'll, I'll Google a player. I remember my Christian, he's 22 years old. 22. <laughs> 22. I gotta tell you though, like some of these younger guys look older. Oh, they totally do. They look our yeah. age. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Our, our age. Well, we look really young. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about my favorite dog food, the farmer's dog. 
The results of switching your dog's food from kibble to fresh can seem like magic. When a senior dog starts acting like a puppy again and the pickiest of eaters can't wait for dinner time, you might think some spells were cast. But the farmer's dog doesn't use any sorcery or secret ingredients to make their fresh food, just science. The farmer's dog makes and delivers fresh, healthy dog food. It's developed by vets, nutritionally balanced, and made from real healthy ingredients to human food safety standards. It's the best option for dogs at all life stages because it's not kibble, it's not canned goo, it's just real healthy food. Traditional dry and wet dog food options are highly processed, can use much lower quality ingredients than they claim to, and are extremely difficult to portion accurately. The farmer's dog isn't just fresh, higher quality food. They also send the food pre-portioned specifically for your dog based on their unique nutritional needs. This makes it easy to help your dog maintain their ideal weight which is one of the biggest indicators of a full, healthy life. I now have three dogs. I just recently got a new puppy. I rescued this little guy. And my kids love that this food comes pre-portioned with their names already on it. So Quinn, Kona, and Teddy all have their own food. It makes it really fun to feed them. It doesn't matter if your dog is young or old. It's always the right time to begin investing in their health, helping you live more healthy, happy, and full years together. That means more magical moments with your dog, but no actual magic is required. Get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash honest. Plus, you get free shipping. Just go to thefarmersdog.com slash honest. Go to thefarmersdog.com slash honest to get 50% off your first box plus free shipping. Shipping. Okay, fellow parents, let's talk about a children's vitamin that I love, which is Haya. I know you guys have heard me talk about it before because I love it so much. Typical children's vitamins are basically just candy in disguise, filled with two teaspoons of sugar, unhealthy chemicals, and other gummy junk that growing kids should just never eat. That's why Haya was created, the pediatrician approved, super powered, chewable vitamin. While most children's vitamins are filled with five grams of sugar and can contribute to a variety of health issues, Haya is made with zero sugar sugar, and zero gummy junk. Yet it tastes great and is perfect for picky eaters. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full body nourishment our kids need with the yummy taste they love. It's non-GMO, vegan, dairy-free, allergy-free, gelatin-free, nut-free, and everything else you can imagine. Haya is designed for kids of all ages and sent straight to your door so parents have one less thing to worry about. We've been getting Haya for, gosh, I think like a year and a half now, and I I never have to badger my kids about taking these vitamins. They love them. They love that they each have their own little bottle. They can decorate them with stickers that they come with. So these I love because it just gives me peace of mind. My kids are getting all of the nutrients that they need and I don't have to stress about getting it in their bodies. So guys, I've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, you must go to HayaHealth.com slash honest. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash honest and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. Hair thinning is complicated. The problem is it's actually much bigger than your hair alone. Like your skin, hair is a reflection of your health and internal factors can impact the way your hair looks, feels, and grows. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement with over 1 million people seeing thicker, stronger, faster growing hair with less shedding. Everyone's root cause of hair thinning are different, so a one-size-fits-all approach to hair growth doesn't cut it. Nutrafol has multiple formulas that are tailored to give your hair what it needs to grow throughout different stages, such as postpartum and menopause, as well as different lifestyles, such as plant-based diets. Physician formulated with drug-free ingredients, Nutrafol supplements support healthy hair growth from within by targeting root causes of thinning, including stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, lifestyle, and metabolism as they evolve throughout a woman's life. While many supplements rely solely on ingredient studies, Nutrafol clinically tests final formulations to ensure their efficacy. In a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth after taking Nutrafol women's hair growth supplement for six months. 
I've talked about it before, but I've had such great results with Nutrafol. I've been taking it for about six months now, and I cannot say enough good stuff. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering my listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter promo code HONEST. Find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and hairstylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U T R A F O L dot com promo code honest. That's neutral dot com promo code honest. But I also think like if you're a, a professional athlete, like you carry yourself in a different way. They Ooh, definitely look it's older. That confidence. Yeah. But hockey players are dirty fucking dogs. So well, athletes are dirty fucking dogs. Athletes are dirty fucking dogs. That's yo, okay. I've got two stories for you about athletes. Okay. So, okay, this hockey, we're just gonna call him Hockey Man. So this one particular guy DMs me and I'm like, I remember him from the game because he was like kind of looking at me and I was looking at him. Do you remember where it happened? <clears throat> where he DM, like where I where, was when he yeah. DMed me? We were all in the Bahamas together. No, we had already been talking. Oh. So actually, actually, this is what happened. How did I know he was following me? So the Bahamas with me, you, and Scoot. I'm not yeah. talking Bahamas with me. No, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just to clarify that. We're not talking about that trip. No, what happened was going into the game, I knew that this one particular player was following me because I will sometimes on Instagram, you can see like the verified accounts who will follow you, like the activity. So I had noticed that this one guy was following me. So during the game, he was like kind of looking at me. Even my kids were like, he's looking at you. I'm like, I know. Oh my God. <laughs> so he DM'd me the next, I think that night and I got it the next morning. So we just kind of started talking, but his profile picture was him and a girl. So he messages you, messages you from an account that has a picture with him and a girl. Yeah. It. It's a private account. So I can't see all of his other photos, but the main profile picture is him and a girl. Wait, he's a verified Professional athlete with yeah. a private account. Yeah. I thought you couldn't be private if you're here. Yeah, you can if you, it's not in a business account. Yeah. I want to make my account private. You do? Just because it's like, why do you want these random looky loo people? Yeah, like, no, I'm that's jealous true. of people who have a private account. I actually, there's something to it, I agree. <laughs> well, that's like kind of what close friends is for me, I feel like. Yeah. Anyways, so we're talking a little bit, and then like a day or two into talking, I'm like, by the way, who's the girl in your profile picture? And he's like, oh, I was waiting for you to ask. <laughs> He is like, it's my ex-girlfriend, but he's from Canada. He's like, but I don't want, you know, all of our friends and family back home to start questioning it. And, you know, I just want to like, that give it some time. That is the biggest load of BS give on earth. Give it some time earth. before we announce it. I go, oh, okay, that makes sense. Of course you do. <laughs> of course you do. You're always chill. <laughs> like, what? Why? How the fuck? The fact that I believed that? Well, also, you just probably didn't really care. I didn't like, give that's a not, fuck. Yeah. Well, not a girl code, but you just are like, if he's like, telling okay. me that, then whatever. I'm taking things at face value. But also, yeah. Face value, I like that. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, great. We continue on the conversation. So we're like talking. We go to the Bahamas pretty soon thereafter. And now we're like, sending photos to each other and it's like getting like not hot and heavy but like it's no like, it was for sure it not, was. not 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 anything like sexual or like yeah, yeah, yeah. super flirty but like you guys were messaging a lot back and forth we're, and then that's my favorite game so i remember like we were like in the water and we're like messaging like let me see what you say no yeah. no write this right and, yeah. so we were having like fun with it right and and it like escalated to like not sexy pictures but like sending pictures to each other and then I don't, I must have like literally woken up and I was like, this guy is so full of shit. This is his fucking girlfriend. So I said to him, Hey, hockey man, you and I need to stop talking because I know that that's your girlfriend in your profile picture. And he just didn't say anything. And then remember he kept texting me like nothing had happened. No, but we're missing out the part. Like I really did do a deep dive. Oh stop. yeah. Yeah. I yeah. found the girlfriend. That's she right. was recently posting. Like, cause That's I went right. into like tag photos. I found another friend of theirs. And You're then, a like, detective. Yeah. I love it. Like yeah. you have to do it. And <laughs> I found a picture of them, like a tagged photo where they were just together. Yeah, that's right. So then that's you kind of right. called him out and you're like, why are we talking? Because also, by the way, like you're so not interested Wait. in that kind of stuff. I want to pull up the, the text messages. So he was going to come to Nashville. That's right. After the season, he was going to come to Nashville. So I go, so you're going to come here and hang with me. Yet your profile is still your ex-girlfriend. No response. <laughs> and that was the end of it? <clears throat> that was it. And then like two months later, he goes, you look amazing in your stories. 
Because you called him out, yeah. he knew. He goes quiet for a while, and then he just comes back. Here's the thing, too. Like, a guy like that, he's clearly in a relationship, obviously. Obviously. He has to have the picture because the girl, the girlfriend probably forces him to. Yeah, because like, he's a dirty yeah, dog. He, she knows he's yeah. a cheater. And then his profile is private, so girls that he's talking to can't see pictures yep. of him and his girlfriend. Like, Ew. that is so sketchball. Like, that's so dirty. Dude, he kept texting me a month later. L I love ya. Miss you with a heart. I've never even met this guy. And then uh, five days later, miss you, Cavi. Remember at one point, like, I thought it was a fake person. I yeah, like, yeah. I was like, this isn't even I a saw him in real because life. Because it's like the way that he was messaging with you, it was so weird. It was like. Then I go again, I'm pretty confident you have a girlfriend, so probably best if we don't talk. And he didn't respond. And then since then, he has texted me twice and I just didn't respond. These guys are fucking trash, man. I almost like a large part of me wants to say his name just to like save no, this that's girlfriend so but terrible. it's not my place not it's not my place so i'm not going to i'll message her <laughs> you, you get on i'll it. message her this podcast <laughs> directly <laughs> it was your boyfriend we're talking about but so okay so guys are pretty scummy so another but wait what do you think that his purpose is just to feel i think cool? it's to say i'm talking to kristen Calvary that's what I, that's with what like saying. his teammates yeah and I think he shows people like look yeah. i'm actually talking to her or whatever yeah because by the way the guys who do cheat and do this stuff are telling their guy friends because it's a brag for them yeah <clears throat> but, but whether it's not, i'm not saying just with me i'm saying with like any girl it's like yeah look i still got it i got it ew that's so gross guys are trash not all guys. I love a lot of guys. No, but. there's a lot of really good guys, but there's still a lot of dirt bags. I just don't like, because the majority of like straight men that I hang around, like they'd be so turned off by that. Like, I agree. I feel like we live in an age now. Like I even think about like Kevin, the guy that we train yeah. with, like the most solid salt of the earth guy yes. on earth. And imagine one of his friends showing him that. He'd be like, dude, you're married. Or he you're would in be a like, what are you doing? Yeah, and it's just like, I don't know. But I guess there are but guys you know who still think that's cool. In the last couple years, though, I have had so many married guys, guys in relationships, married guys, come after me to the point where I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Is it something that I'm giving? I've had to say to multiple people, you know this, like all these people you're married or you're in a relationship like what the fuck are you doing stop texting me i wonder what that is because it really is a thing i mean there a lot i can think of five people just like, no right i know now, the top i, I of can my think head. of 10 just for you <laughs> it's, it's, i'm like is i don't i don't i don't get it okay but anyway okay so i'm gonna tell you guys about a val another athlete story on valentine's day so this is in my early 20s i was probably 21 or 22 and <clears throat> there was a baseball player who at the time was a very big deal. He played for San Francisco. That's all I will say. And it means nothing to me. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, but they, they honestly, it probably means nothing to 90% of <laughs> <No>. the audience. <laughs> They're like, what? <laughs> Women love sports. Yeah. So this guy, he was neighbors with um, one of my friends. And so we would see him out all the time. And he was like really interested in me, apparently. And I was like, single? He was single, I thought he was single, and but he was always so drunk every time I would see Ew. him out. Like there was one time he was coming up to talk to me and he literally fell on the table at a club, like bottle service, like the whole thing. He fell on the table and I was like, oh my God, I was like, get no. the fuck away from me. Like you're so embarrassing. But every time I would see him out, like he would always come up to me and was like fucking badgering me. And finally, I don't know why, but I was like, all right, I'll go on a date with you. <laughs> Like, <laughs> you can break her down, ladies and gentlemen. Like, why? <laughs> Literally a little persistency and I'm all yours. <laughs> By the way, that just happened with someone else. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, should I just go out with him? He's been chasing me for two years. I don't know why the first two but years. But because I also do you think, like, persistence, like, really turns it's kinda you It's kind of hot. You, like, love it. I'm like, you want me really badly. All right, let's see yeah, if you can bring it to the table. <laughs> What's going on? I mean, you know, I didn't want to for two years, but hey, what, what, why not now? But then it's always a letdown because you know at the beginning if I you should or not. I fucking know. <sighs> yeah, I just agreed to go out with someone else that I've literally been saying no to for two years, but whatever. Anyways, okay, so I go out with this guy. So now I'm like kind of dating this guy. Um, to his credit, I will say, I think at one point in time it had come up that like he was dating someone in San Francisco. Like when he was in San Francisco, he sort of had a girlfriend and I was like, okay, I mean, <laughs> I respect that you're telling me that. 
Oh, and he told you that. I'm pretty sure he told me that. And I was like... Like I, drunk at a bar when I told Probably. That? I was just like falling over <laughs> tables. He's like slurring like, a mile but, away. I have a girlfriend. But like he was up in San Francisco during the season and he was in LA during the off season. So I kind of took it like, okay, when he's in LA, like they're sort of doing their own thing. And when he goes back up to San Francisco, like they'll be together. Fine. So I'm thinking like, okay, when the season starts, like we'll be done. Anyways. So one Valentine's Day... I get a huge bouquet of flowers from him. And I'm like, oh, you know, he's so sweet. My little, you know, my baseball player boy. So now I'm at my friend's house with all, all my friends and it's his neighbor's house. And I'm telling everyone how I got flowers from my baseball boy. And my friend Kendall goes, he sent me flowers too. And I was like, what? He sent you flowers too? And the same Valentine's Day? Same Valentine's Day. Oh my, my like gosh. My really good friend. Like we would hang out all the time. She told me he does have a girlfriend up in San Francisco and they are fully together. Fully together. Okay, as much as I think that I know everything that happens in the world, this is like one area where like I really am like innocent. Like I think that's so gross. Disgusting. That's so gross. Like when you're in a relationship, like I would be heartbroken. Like, I know. But also imagine sending multiple people flowers. But or also whatever. who has the time? I know. It. Like I'm in a relationship for 10 years. I, I always know. think about like even if I want, and I'm the horniest person on earth, like I would love, like I, the idea of it, like who has the time or the energy to do all of this stuff? Or the sneaking around and also like, Scoot knows everything that I'm up to. Not to mention, not to sound like I'm trying to be like Mr. Goody Goody, <laughs> but like I could never hurt Scoot like that. I know. Like these people like, why are you in a relationship? Don't well, be in a relationship then if you're that dirty. I just talked to a dating coach and he said that the reason people will cheat and do it's all this all stuff. It's all insecurity. Well, yes. And it's also because like his whole thing is like achieving a 10 out of 10 relationship. And like you would say like you and Scoot have a 10 out of 10 relationship, right? Like you're That's very happy on very every level. That's interesting. It's, I think it's a lot of times when people settle and they're like, or they're like lacking one really important thing. Or like we were talking or you do not have the connection. Like, yeah. I really do feel so connected to Scoot. I know I will never find that anywhere else. Yeah. So there's no way I would look anywhere else. Like, I know nothing would compare. That. But yes, yeah, these people who are in a relationship and they've settled. But they're not happy. Yeah. And you see a lot of people too, like, unfortunately, I found this. Like, people I went to high school with that married really young. Yeah. And they just kind of got married. And then later they start being like, well, what if I wanted to try other people? They're like, you have to be there. with the right person. Like, the connection has to be there. Because if you're going to spend the rest of your life with somebody, yeah. you have to be in love with them. Because that's my thing. Like, every relationship I've ever been in, <clears throat> when it's been really good, well, how do I want to say this? it's like it was no, just say it how you're thinking well because you are really good with relationships you are you do i'm very think, loyal yeah like, you I, are the most loyal. i'm the like, most loyal you will not cheat when like, i'm when i like someone like that's it for me even yeah. if it's a boyfriend even like i have never been one to look around and see what because like if i'm gonna be with you it's because i really fucking like you well and you want well that's why i go back to the confidence thing like i think you are very confident like i think all these people like in a relationship and they're looking at other people like they want to feel hot they again. They need that extra they, validation. Yeah. yeah I like, agree. I don't care about that at all. Like, yeah. at all. No, I don't either. Then I think that you don't at all. I don't either. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. So I think, I think that made a lot of sense to me when he said, like, if you don't have a 10 out of 10 relationship, like, that's usually when it happens. That's the thing. Yeah. I feel like when you are in a relationship, like you in particular, you are so all in and you're so low, whatever. But I bet... Things start going bad in the relationship, and then all of a sudden you notice yourself looking out mm -hmm. outwards or being like, would it be better with this person or whatever? Then you really know, like, okay, I'm this not is in the over. Right And obviously that's from, like, years of my needs not getting met, yeah. too. I mean, but I think the whole thing that we're talking about, like, mm -hmm. these guys doing it, it's like, obviously it's terrible to the woman that they're with. But also, also these guys, like, imagine how much easier your life is it could be if you just did what you wanted to do. Like, who has the time know, for this stuff? I know. I think a lot of guys, and girls, but guys live in fear of, like, just it's like almost easier to cheat and do these things than ending what's right in front of you because you're so fucking scared of yeah and it's what. it's selfish oh, and yeah. probably exciting a lot of people yeah. are bored in their life so think about if you're bored in your life like what's the most exciting thing you do cheat <laughs> I mean, come well, on like, get a hobby my goodness go to pottery class well, that's like you and i because like i haven't been dating lately and and i i wasn't talking to anyone there for a while and 
finally I started talking to someone and we're both like, we needed this. Like you and I, yeah. both like, we needed this. We needed me to talk to someone because now it's like, ooh, we get a little excitement back. I literally lived through you for that kind of stuff. Like, I love it. That's probably why I'm such a dork sitting on these podcasts like this because it's like, I enjoy it so much. I also like it's love so romance bad. and like the flirting stage and all that kind it's of stuff. It's the best. Yes, I love hearing about it. It makes me feel like young. <laughs> you want to know what's so funny though? It's like, I was just thinking about this last night and today because I just just really started talking to someone and it's like the fantasies that we come up with in our minds of like who these people are i have not met this guy okay we're literally just talking oh my every god night, i wish that we could just show up make sure it's so fucking hot but every night i'm like i can't wait to go to bed so i can like lay in bed and like come up with this like fantasy in my head naughty girl not, not like oh my god the <laughs> she's always at charge <laughs> You guys, I think at this point know what a health nut I am. And so, you know, I love to give you all of my favorite healthy brands. And one of them is Primal Kitchen. In all the hustle and bustle of being a busy mom between shuttling the kids to practice, work, exercise, and checking off my endless mommy to-do list, there's not a moment to spare. And that's why I'm so grateful for Primal Kitchen. I am always using their avocado oil. I actually just fried some Brussels sprouts in it the other night. And my pantry is always stocked with their delicious dressings and sauces, like their buffalo sauce, which I love putting on wings, especially right now with football season going on. Primal Kitchen products are made with honest ingredients you can trust, like the avocado oil. Primal Kitchen products have real, delicious, bold flavor that the whole family will love. Primal Kitchen makes cooking family meals easy. With just one bottle or jar from your pantry, you can instantly add flavor to any meal. Using Primal Kitchen products is one simple thing you can do for yourself and your family to enjoy a delicious meal. Many Primal Kitchen products are no dairy, gluten-free, and made without cane sugar, corn syrup, artificial sweeteners, or seed oils, so you can fit your family's individual needs. Another one of my favorites is their mayonnaise because it's also made with avocado oil, which is just so much better for you than some of these other nasty seed oils. You guys, you can find Primal Kitchen at Target, Walmart, and your local grocery stores. I personally stock up at Whole Foods. Or if you want to save 20% off your entire online order, head to primalkitchen.com and use my code HONEST at checkout. I don't know about you guys, but normally I find bras to be so uncomfortable and constricting. They're the first thing I take off when I get home. But Skims has changed that for me. You know I love Skims underwear, so I finally had to try their bras, and Skims has delivered again. Skims bras are worth the hype for the amazing shape and support they give, but what I wasn't expecting was how comfortable they are. I've been wearing Skims Fits Everybody thong for probably about a year now, and I recently just tried their bras. I haven't found an underwire bra that I love in years until now. Skims is creating the next generation of underwear and bras for everybody. I tried the Fits Everybody t-shirt bra from Skims and it's literally the best t-shirt bra I have ever owned. Skims bras are made with innovative technology to give you the best shape and support. Plus, every bra is designed with the comfiest and softest materials, so you'll feel like you're wearing nothing at all. Skims offers a complete system of bra solutions for every need and style. Skims bras are available now in 62 sizes, 30A through 46H. Believe the hype. Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason. Skims bras are now available at skims.com. Plus, get free shipping on orders over $75. If you haven't yet, be sure to let them know I sent you. After you place your order, select podcast in the survey and select my show in the drop-down menu that follows. And if you're looking for a gift for your Valentine or maybe just for yourself, Skims just launched their best Valentine's shop ever, which is also available at skims.com. Okay, guys, let's talk about hard seltzers. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I really enjoy one or two from time to time. I know that in the last few years, they've been all the rage. And honestly, it's for good reason, especially if you're having a party. I like to throw parties in the spring and summer months, and I always have Truly in a cooler. Truly believes life can be more refreshing when we can be real, let loose, embrace imperfection, and allow ourselves to be free from convention. That's why Truly has something for everyone in more than 30 unique flavors, including three lightly flavored mix packs, berry, and new party pack. Truly Hard Seltzer's new party pack has a flavor for everyone, making it perfect for you and all your friends. With four fan favorite flavors, including brand new raspberry, it's got a little something for everyone. 
bring it to wine night, bring it to the book club, bring it to the gym. Um, Maybe not the gym, but you get what I'm saying. With this new pack, there's nowhere you can't bring the party. Each flavor is super light, crazy refreshing, and made with real fruit juice. With only 5% ABV, 100 calories, and one gram of sugar in each can, truly is the perfect drink to keep you on track with your New Year's resolution, unless your resolution was to have less fun. To find Truly Hard Seltzer near you, go to trulyhardseltzer.com slash locations. That's trulyhardseltzer.com slash locations. Truly Hard Seltzer. Keep it light. Truly Hard Seltzer Beverage Company, Boston, Massachusetts. Please drink responsibly. Are you, are you ready for this? <laughs> so the other day... <laughs> I went to masturbate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not shocked that we talk about that all, all the time. The subject, and my, I've got a multiple vibrators, but my favorite one was out of battery. So I'm like, God damn it. All right, fine. I plug it in. And I'm like, I have to remember to put that back before my kids come home from school. <gasps> I don't. I don't. No. Do not remember, of course. And so it's just in my bathroom charging on the counter. No. It's the one from Goop that looks like the ice cream cone. <laughs> so it, so it could like, be anything. could really be anything. But it's can, a face tool. It's a, yeah, oh, that's a good idea. That's what you should always that's say. That's a good it's a one. Face tool. But so you have to go through my bathroom to get to my closet. And the other night I was in my closet. And Camden, of course, out of all my kids, my oldest, who would be, maybe kind of know what it is. I don't know why he would, but of all of them. And, um, and so he came in my bathroom and I was like, oh my God. And I remembered. I was like, wait, hang on. <laughs> Thank God he didn't see it, but I had a fucking panic attack. Like, what would I, what would I, I was going to say a back massager. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah, they wouldn't know. But I mean, at that age, I remember that I had one neighbor who, like, their parents had condoms in their drawer. And every time I would go over my the friends. Parents house, had the parents had condoms? The parents had condoms. I mean, this is like in the 90s. Yeah, they yeah, didn't want to yeah. their kid or whatever. But I was so obsessed with that idea. I would always just go look at the condoms. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Everything is such a big deal at, at that, that age. age. It's a huge deal. Yeah, it really is. Oh my oh, god. Oh god, I know. So that was that was a whole thing. But um but but oh, okay, but my point is it's just so funny because like I <laughs> she's thinking about her. <laughs> she's thinking about her ice cream cone now. I'm thinking about masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> I already did today. Do people talk about that with their friends? Because you and I talk about it. Did you we talk about, about it. I know why I said I jerk off too. <laughs> yeah, like uh, one of my yeah, um, I actually have one girlfriend that like I consistently talk about that with. It's the most natural thing in the world, by the yeah. way. Anyone who's like weird about that, like, well, they're probably really uptight if they're not but doing But by that. the way, all of my girlfriends are in relationships. Every single one of them. So I'm probably masturbating a lot but more. But I mean, than do them. people still mm. think that masturbating is like taboo? Like, I don't who, think so. No, right? I Everyone think people does are it. cool with it. And if you yeah. do, like you know who doesn't masturbate? Who? Uh, people who are negative trolls on Instagram. They do not they masturbate. Do not masturbate. If they, they took to that let, energy and yeah, put they need it there, to let, they need to let some steam out. They would be so much happier. Yeah. They were just coming all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever people are like, oh, masturbating, they're like, I never do that. I'm like, well, you, you are so Well, you need to tight. let go. Yeah, your shoulders probably hurt. Literally the best thing about being a girl is that you can make yourself come so many times. Really? I came like four or five times today. Oh my gosh, please cut this out. That's too much. <laughs> Thinking about my new boy toy. But but, um, but okay, so it's so To funny. the point where when we went to Park City together, it was the one time we travel all the time together, Chris and I, right? And we always get our own rooms, obviously, because we're adults. We should, we will never be sleeping yeah. in the same room. But we were going to Park City and it was last minute. And I was trying to do this thing where I'm like, I'm not going to travel as much. And I only like to really spend a lot of money if I'm with Scoot, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, I don't want to spend a ton of money on myself on to travel by yourself, at a yeah. last minute. It was the last minute trip to Park yeah. City. So I was like, Kristen, I'm not going to spend, because it's expensive. <laughs> An expensive the whole thing sport, is so man. expensive. So I was like, Chris, I don't really want to like, spend all that extra money, especially if Scoot can't come or whatever. And then I was like, but if you share a room, I'll go with you. And so we both decided to I'm share. like, please come skiing with me. Yeah, she like wanted to go so bad. Me. I'm like, if you share a room. So anyways, we get a room to share and both of us could not stop thinking about it. I was like, I cannot sleep in the same room as Krista. Like, uh, as close as we are, we're also very bossy. Like, when you want to go to bed, you go to bed. When yeah. I want to go to bed, I go to bed. Yeah. And whatever. So at the last minute, I got my own room. And I was like, but, thank God, because now I can jerk off. But that's what we post on. <laughs> and I told her that was How my biggest worry. How am I going to jerk off with your <laughs> The fact that I say jerk off. Oh my it's God. It's so funny. It just makes it funnier. It, I know. Well, that's like, I'm always like, I have just the Just the idea of a real jerk off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're cranky, I'm like, did you jerk off today? <laughs> it is 
true though. Like everyone needs to have that release, man. It's true. Oh if I'm a little gosh. uptight, I'm like, oh my gosh, because I haven't masturbated in a couple days. <laughs> How my mom doesn't listen to this episode, <laughs> <laughs> or anyone I know. Oh god. I hope no one that I know is. Cut to this some episode. of that out. I mean, I'm not going to. Oh, I'm not well, going okay. to. This we're being honest. <laughs> but it's so funny when you start talking to someone before you meet them because you come up with this whole idea of who they are in the, in your mind. Which nine kind of scares out of ten me too, times, you can be let down. Nine, but nine times out of ten, I am let down because yeah. I've built them up to be this like the hero character, right? I'm always gonna save me, see, so, like just do sweep me off my feet, and then I'm like, God, you suck. I really hope that with this particular guy that I'm not let down because this he could be a real game changer for me, in the sense that guys, I'm gonna be very real with you. There has been no one in my life co consistently. How do we want to phrase it? Um, just like a male companion that I could have sex with from time to time. Cause I have like no sex, you guys. Like I literally have no sex. I don't know the last time I had sex. I don't either. Wait, I like really have to think about this. You really do uh, need to have a journal. You need to have a diary. Justin, it's been a long time since I've You're had all sex. about your calendar. Do you put it in there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who it was with. I do, but I'm not going to say, say it. Say it. Um, wait, no, it wasn't mine. No, it was. Yeah, it was. It was. Kristen, that's like months ago. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my, get the dust buster it out. It was Pittsburgh Mike. That wasn't like Thanksgiving. That was before Thanksgiving. Wow, it's been a long, cold winter. <laughs> oh my god, that's so sad. But why can't you just have like a... It's the South. They don't do that here. They well, I, that there was here. one person here that I like tried. I feel like if you were in LA, you would have I somebody would, like... LA everybody has right. someone they hook up with. Yeah. Like... There's just, there's not a lot of guys in Nashville. That like, are single. There's just not Right, that are single. Yeah, I mean, I try At your to, age. Um, <laughs> right, so that's why I have You can to, go down to Broadway and get, get laid. I can, listen, guys, if I wanted to get laid, I could get laid. I just feel like... No, I mean, you want something very, that you feel comfortable with. I need with. something, like, I have to be attracted to the person, obviously. I think <laughs> also, too, like, even because, right, you have been meeting guys, they all want to be your boyfriend right away. So that's the thing, it's like, And it's every that guy. thing that I've been saying for a long time, too, like, you also need to slow it down. Yeah. Like, hey, maybe I'll see you in two weeks. I know. Like, it doesn't have to all of a sudden be, like, roll into just, like, you're dating I all know, of a sudden. I know. So I know. I know. I right. think you mess it up a little bit, too. Well, I come on, I can, I also come on strong. I know that. I can come on strong. And you can start Because I get really excited. I am, like, because I'm all or nothing, right? So, like, if I like someone, I'm all in, and I am, like, oh, my God. And then, like. Zero to 60. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my nickname Your for nickname Kristen. for me. And then reality sets in, and I'm, like, oh. Which is fine. You're doing fine, but you would like to get laid a little bit. It's yeah. important. Or or just but like date someone a little but bit. But also like a little make out here and there. Like is that cuddle so, on the I couch. Know. Is that like, so fucking hard to ask for? I think at this age and in Na Nashville it is. Yeah. Most people are married. Like, you know, most people are married. Yeah. Or they're younger. So that's why I'm going younger. But like in LA and New York, there's so many single people, even into their 50s it's, or whatever, yeah, you know. But like different. here, I don't think a lot of single guys in their 30s, 40s are moving to Nashville no. and just hanging out out in this area. They're not. They're not. So that is uh, what makes it a little bit hard. It's a real problem. So yeah. So I, I've taken the last couple months off dating and I think now I'm like kind of ready to like date again. Oh my god, god. Really? <laughs> or just make out with someone that's really hot. But do you want to be in a relationship? No, I don't want to be in a relationship, so that's why I just need someone, or I don't know. No, I think right now with where I'm at and having my kids more, I just need someone who I could talk to from time to time, make out with from time to time, and like maybe go to dinner with once in a while. That's all I really want. Yeah, I think that would really work. But I also want him to be obsessed with me. Well, that's where we run into a problem, right? Well, not really. Well, right, because then they want to be in a relationship. Yeah, then they literally want to lock it down. Like, you yeah. basically need the male version of you. Like, a guy who's kind of in a similar situation as you. And I always say this, too. Like, maybe a guy who's, like, newly divorced, has kids, also has a lot of priorities to take care of for himself. Yeah. Like, I think, because also all these guys that you've gone out with, like, 
they they make it all about you. Yeah. Like they don't have kids. They haven't been married no, that's before. Not, well, who has been married? Well, if we want to go down that road, I mean, there's been there's been um uh, but I mean you weren't the first to tell me. Well, oh, okay. guys that I've actually been attracted to. Yeah, no. The guy the well, here's the issue. The guys that I Actually been, though, I mean we won't say his name right now, but he would have been perfect. If he was hot. If he was hot. <laughs> I was attracted to him. <laughs> Don't put any Here, of that I want, in. I want. Here's the issue. The only guys that I've been attracted to, yeah, have been in their 30s, their early 30s. So they don't have any kids. They've never been married. It becomes a lot. They live in a camper on the beach. <laughs> and they have no money. It's just different. Yeah. My, my world is very specific. Like, I have three kids. Like, whatever. We've talked about it. I've got a lot going on. I can't just, I can't, yeah, I can't just, like, hang out all the time. Wait, so did you end up saying what the baseball player, he sent you flowers and the other girl, did you ever confront him about it? Yeah, so I think I finally said something to him. Yeah, obviously, and I ended it. Wait, yeah. why can't you share the story about um, the other? <laughs> Who, oh, the Valentine's Day with? The massive Valentine's Day. The presents that I got? Can't you just say his name? He's not a good look right now. Oh, Do you yeah. know all this shit going on? I didn't pay attention to it, but recently I talk about everything pop culture on uh, my Instagram. And at one point, like everyone was saying, I can say it, it's not a big deal. P. Diddy, <laughs> Puff Daddy. Everyone was like, talk about Puff Daddy, what he's going through. I didn't really look into it, but yeah, he's in like hot water right it's, now. It's bad. Well, but, I dodged a fucking bullet. There. Yeah, that could have been you. So, one Valentine's Day, I was 22, I believe. I. We had a mutual friend. He got my number or whatever. He sent me the biggest bouquet of flowers I've ever seen. The biggest box of chocolates I've ever seen. A huge teddy bear. All of his tequila, because he had a tequila brand at the time. I don't know if he still does. And, um, I mean, it was like, holy shit. And he, I mean, it was like multiple people like bringing shit into my house kind of a thing. It's like shit you no. see in a movie. Yes. And then he told me he had a TV crush on me and he wanted to take me out. And I just sort of kept like poo-pooing it. And then I finally said no. But was there a party that was like, oh my God, this is insane. Incredible. Like kind of interesting. Yeah. I mean, there's obviously a part where you're like, whoa, a guy is like spoiling the shit out of me. You're like, that's so sweet. And I've never met this guy. Like, oh my, imagine if I was in a relationship with him, like how sweet it would be at the time. Cause I was 21. Now as an adult, I'm like red fucking flag and clearly yeah, yeah. I mean, that's some love bombing kind of shit. I probably would have done at that age, you know, I would have been... Well, and Pete, he was a big deal at the time. Was it before or after J-Lo? Uh, I'm assuming it was after. Whoa, you would have been like the next J-Lo! <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever say anything to him? We talked a little bit. I mean, he kept asking me out, and I think I was just... I think at first I was just sort of like, oh yeah, ha, ha like that kind of thing. And oh then, my god, I wish you did it just for the pictures. That'd be so fun just, to Google those pictures right just now. For the pictures. Just like you in a fur walking down Robertson, it's like See, 80 degrees oh out god. coming out of the ivy. Well, you know, like, and I've got a lot of stories like that, you guys, where I could never just go on a date with someone because it was so and so. Like I literally no, you're not always have had to be attracted to you. I couldn't. Well, just, you also just don't like. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, and. You're you're not one of those people, yeah, that wouldn't be exciting enough for you. You want that for yourself. Exactly. That's also the difference. I don't want to be the arm candy. No. I want it be yeah. because people want to take my photo, not because I'm with someone. Right, no. Yeah. I mean, you have a lot of confidence like that. But a lot of, I think a lot of women in Hollywood would take up that opportunity. Like People always date all the time in Hollywood because it makes you a bigger exactly. celebrity. I don't want to there is that. such a nasty dark side to Hollywood and I actually kind of love that it's coming to light a little bit more. And this is not the podcast for it. I would love to get into it all, but I think it's great that people are starting to realize how Hollywood is all just a bunch of bullshit. To see how manufactured it uh -huh. is. I mean, when you put certain people together, it gets them attention for whatever they're working on. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a huge thing. I, but more and more people are talking about it. But the wrong people are talking about it. Because sometimes I'll hear people talk about it on social media. I'm like, you're almost there, but you're getting... Because yeah. it's these people from the sidelines. <laughs> like, I'd like to say my whole career, I was in... The trenches, the trenches of that world, yeah. hearing everything in real time, yeah. and then you lived it too. Yeah. Um, but there's that, like a lot of people get it wrong. People get things wrong. They still get it wrong, but they're getting on to something. Like the way yeah. 
It's such an illusion. It's all there illusion. is a lot of reality. There are a lot of very real relationships. Yes, There's a lot of people. very good people in Hollywood. Yeah. But a lot of it is just that smoke and mirrors. It's completely. And a lot of people um, go there knowing that and they're willing to play the game to get ahead. Well, that's the thing is people will do anything to be famous. I mean, yeah. really. I mean, there are fake relationships all the time. Or And I, I, don't, I don't even want to say it's like fake relationships. I think it's more just like... That kind of thing. It'd be like if I actually like went down the P. Diddy road because it was going to make me more famous. It's like you do it because you know in the back of your mind it's good for your career. But well, like, you I'm really, sorry, really but let's be doing it. But you, there's also a lot of people who don't have a lot of substance to them. They're, they're yeah. just not, and they can, like, that's enough for them. Like, yeah. fame is enough, they'll do it for that reason. But like, you want real I want a yeah. real connection and yeah but yeah. that's a lot of Hollywood I don't even know how we got on the Hollywood conversation but <laughs> I don't know how it goes any direction I don't know what we're in. doing anymore <laughs> what is this I have no idea so happy Valentine's Day you guys. <laughs> have a good one <laughs> have a great one. Oh my god um yeah that was a lot of I don't even know what but as always thanks for joining do we oh end on this note? That is hilarious. We just rambled the whole entire time. We literally rambled the Did we the give time. any sort of takeaway? That I masturbate a lot. Okay. All right. <laughs> Other than that, um, know your worth. Look for true love. Know that true love is out there and you will find a good partner. There's also a lot of really good men. I'm yes. not the type of person at all. I have two fabulous brothers who are very committed relationships, good guys. Yeah. I feel like there are very good men out there. So like... Never a bash on men. There's Ever. bad women too. The, by the way, I think women are worse sometimes. I've had my fair share of really shitty guys. I can really say that. Really awful fucking guys. And I still you really have. I have. And I have not lost hope that there are really good guys out there and that I'm actually gonna find a good guy. So I just think no matter what you've been through, don't let that discourage you because there are really good guys. Well, and also know that <clears throat> being with those terrible guys, I think always makes your relationships later better. Makes you appreciate them. Yeah. Yeah. The good guys. The good guys. And you can like spot the bad. Like you, you have to go through that stuff. You really do. We wouldn't know good if we didn't have bad, so. Work, girl. Per. Per. <laughs> Keeping us young. All right, I love you guys. Thank you for joining. I will see you guys next week. Bye. Peace.